you could have sat back in, in March and April and just feel sorry and say, what are we going to do? And what are we going to do? And the people who, who thrived are knowing how to have turned these, these challenges into opportunities. You are listening to the Brilliant Events and Venues podcast, the podcast for savvy event professionals who want to learn unique ways to engage attendees at events, cool places to host them, and everything in between. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to episode 19 of the Brilliant Events and Venues podcast. My name is Shantae, and I'm the project manager for Scavenger. And I am excited today because I have a guest, a special guest, and his name is Herb Carlitz. And he is the CEO and founder of Carlitz & Company, an industry leader in designing and marketing globally recognized events. So we're going to be talking about that today, everyone. Now, before we bring out into the show, I would like to share a little bit of information about the previous episode of the Brilliant Events and Venues podcast, as well as today's inspirational quote. If you missed episode 18 of the Brilliant Events and Venues podcast, as always, it is a must listen. In that episode, I had a special guest in the show, and her name is Jill Slater. And Jill is a managing director at Helms Briscoe. We had a very engaging and a very informative show, and we discussed gamification at virtual events. The information that was shared can be a real game changer for your events, so make sure to go and check it out. Visit scavengerhunt.biz, then click on podcast to listen to episode 18, as well as previous episodes. Now, here is today's inspirational quote that I chose, and it is actually from Roy T. Bennett. And I thought this was great because it resonated. So I'm going to share this with everyone today. And here it is. Attitude is a choice. Happiness is a choice. Optimism is a choice. Kindness is a choice. Giving is a choice. Respect is a choice. Whatever choice you make, makes you choose wisely. Again, that was from Roy T. Bennett. As mentioned previously, the guest for today's show is Herb Carlitz, the CEO and founder of Carlitz & Company, an industry leader in designing and marketing globally recognized events, including Flavor, Napa Valley, the New York City Wine and Food Festival, and Harlem Eat-Up that enable their clients to engage with their own clients and customers. Herb founded Carlitz & Company 30 years ago as a marketing firm. However, his passion for food and wine soon influenced the direction of his work, and he became one of the first to recognize and market the idea of star chefs before they were globally recognized names. Listen in as he shares his superpower, his involvement in feel-good classic campaigns such as Hands Across America and USA for Africa, We Are the World, as well as how his company navigated through the pandemic. Thank you for joining us on the Brilliant Events and Venues podcast. How are you today? I'm doing great, Shantae. I'm so thankful for you having me, and I'm, I'm actually feeling very inspired by Roy T. Bennett's quotes. And uh, I'm definitely going to read his book, which which I which I Google because I went, wow, he's just so all about you choosing your own path and being proactive and how all your life choices are for you to make. And that just applies to everything, I think, personal life, business life. So you you inspired me with that quote. OK, so you got me going. Thank you. You know what? When I read that, I was like, oh, you know, you get chills when you read something. I'm like, oh, that's it right there. That's the one for today. (laughs) And especially relevant with, you know, the times we're in because, you know, you could have sat back in in March and April and just feel sorry and say, what are we going to do? And what are we going to do? And the people who who thrived are knowing how to have turned these these challenges into opportunities and be proactive and make decisions and, and seize an opportunity in a, in a positive way. So I, I'm, I'm, I think I'm more of a Roy T. Bennett fan now, actually, in, in addition to your Sunday. Oh, well, good. Yeah. 
Well, that's awesome. And hopefully that we've inspired other people as they listen to this as well. And that's what it's all about. Totally. Um, especially right. young, younger people yes. who can choose their path and, 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 and take a shot, take a flyer. Don't, don't settle. There's no reason to settle reach, you know, visualize what you want and do everything you can and be totally committed to go after it. That's right. That is so true. You sound like an entrepreneur, Herb. That's what you sound uh, like to me. <laughs> I, um, you know, that's interesting. Yes, I guess I am. But there's, a, you know, in, not in the modernistic way that people talk about entrepreneurs. Um, mm -hmm. But but I, I, I guess in my own way, which maybe we'll cover, you know, in, in, in this podcast, I'll explain what I mean by that and why I'm not just totally embracing the entrepreneur label. But um, but definitely parts of it stick for me. Cool. I'm, I'd love to hear that. You definitely got to share. I will, definitely have to share that. All right. Awesome. OK, now, Herb, I like to have fun. We're about gamification over here and having fun. So we do like to do icebreakers, got it. right? OK, so. Of course, they're fun. Great way to start the show. And for us, I like to know your superpowers. So share your superpower oh, wow. with the audience. Oh, wow. I am so not about having a superpower that I ever like know that I have a superpower. But I'm going to say and, and I'm going to say my superpower is never forgetting who you are and where you came from. I, I feel very accomplished in what I've created in my agency, which I started out 30 years ago. And I've, I've, I've done a lot of, you know, w w with teams, great, impressive things. I've never forgotten who I am. I've never forgotten. And I just treat everyone with respect. And I, I think it just comes maybe from my head to be, to, to be biased here, but my Brooklyn upbringing, I always, I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, and, and our offices were in New York City. And I always say Brooklyn mm -hmm. people are good people because they, they're down to earth and um, they never drink their own Kool-Aid. And I'm sure that's an oversimplification and exaggeration to, to, to label everybody in Brooklyn. But I can, <laughs> I'm comfortable with saying that about me in that I, my, my best friends, and this is literally no one, is everybody from the garage attendant to where I remember before I had my own company. The people, the people in the mailroom, I worked at a huge PR agency. And I treated everyone the same. And I was the fastest young rising executive in the whole place. But I just always, everyone was the same to me. And I just never lost that, that sense of, of place. And I, and I do think that's actually a superpower. I mean, I can tell you, I, you know, it was just true. I played the drums since I'm five years old and I can tell you some other stuff. Wow. Yeah. 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 But you know, in dealing with people and how you approach life and, treating everyone with kindness and how it all plays into that Roy T. Bennett quote, I think is, is a, is a whole formula for success. Wow. I agree. Can we clone you? Uh, I, I want to <laughs> clone you first. <laughs> They'll be the two best clones. There we out go. There. How's okay. that? You got it. <laughs> we'll just start over. Okay. <laughs> just clone, clone us and it'll, everything sure. will be perfect. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. You know, uh, it's funny. I think we have things in common. And I know we had our, our pre-talk before we did the show. You asked about me and I told you some of my sure. history. And I think when you're around people, just different people, like you start to see not differences, but like things that are in common. I think it's beautiful. I really do. I think it's beautiful. And I think that plays into, like you were saying, just treat everyone the same. And it's like, that comes from within. There's just like there are reflections of who you are, like in different aspects. That's how I see people anyway, you know. So I think being in, in events and working with people and having that ability, in your case, that superpower, you know, I, I think that is awesome. So thank you so much for sharing that, Herb. Herb, thank you so much for sharing your superpower. And now share with us more information about your organization and also talk to us about some of your events that you've done recently. Wow. All right. I'm happy to do that. As I, as I alluded to before, um, you know, this is my 30th year in business. What's that business? So I started 
at a very large public relations agency, Burson Marsteller, where I was at for 14 years. And I created the event marketing experiential program there that they, ne that they never had. They were a corporate PR firm. When I joined them out of college, I'll never forget my first two assignments was trying to promote Pitney Bowes postage meters and Owens Corning fiberglass smokeless fire retardant hospital <laughs> curtains. I can't believe wow, I still that's remember that. But you can you gotta you have to admit neither of those subjects would would you know make you right. go dance on a table. And of course clients wanted it to be on the front page of the Wall Street Journal. And I, I just see every opportunity as an opportunity to as you said early on, mo find your way, make it what you want, get in the door. And that's what I did over years of learning the basics and learning how to write and learning how to communicate in a big office and and building my marketing expertise. And that basically took off when when the client, I remember, was AT&T, and we, we created a, a series of, of concerts in different markets uh, that was tied to the Olympic torch run. It was to help bring a, a, a voice and a personality to a big conglomerate like AT&T. They'd never done anything like that. It was just when all those smaller phone companies were coming out and AT&T was losing market share. I quickly learned that everything we did was around marketing, uh, whether you're doing promotion, advertising, uh, whatever. And and I had never really taken any formal courses in any of that in marketing. And But I learned that's what everything we do was about, uh, even to the point of the, being involved in some of the biggest events ever. If you remember... Shantae, do you remember USA do. for, USA for Africa, We yeah. Are the World? So, so the back, so there was not a backlash, but, and I was there for the film, for the filming of that, wow. the production of that. It was the, it was the, the night after the American Music Awards in LA when they had all the performers there and it was Quincy Michael Jones Jackson. and Lionel Richie. We got yeah. together with Michael Jackson. I, I got the poster and everything. Wow, so I got the original cool. negatives. Uh, so from that, but the, but the American, um, uh, commentary about that was what about all the what about all the starving people here in the here in the U.S. What are we going to do about them? Because there was also issues that with Ethiopia and Addis Ababa, there that the communists were letting the food just rot on the on the airfields and not getting the people mm. the food. Anyway, do you remember mm -hmm. something called Hands Across America? Where everybody, no, I did that. I did. I will take. Yeah, you know, we. I, I with a couple of colleagues. We were at the New York City Ballet at Lincoln Center, and the dancers were dancing to We Are the World. And at one point, they all hold hands. And we all looked at it, and we said, we got to form a human chain across the country, the entire country, unbroken, and have events happening in each place. And it really was the beginning of some of the biggest events that we did that got publicity, but also touched people. It resonated. And that was the birth of, of event marketing, um, at least for me. And I think I was a pioneer in the area, in, the, in, the, in, in that field, and in sponsorship marketing and music marketing and creating programs and exclusivity for clients like American Express, who were pushing their credit cards, which were all about special access or having a privilege. Mm -hmm. And so we created privileges. So there'd be, you know, hot concerts that everybody wanted to see, but you had to have an Amex card to get it, to, to see it. And the, the fancier your card, the better your ticket. I mean, I'm oversimplifying it, but I think, mm -hmm. you know, get the idea of what I just saw that as it's, it was marketing in an area that I loved and a background of what I loved, which was the entertainment marketing business. And I coupled that with my personal background that my two passions in, in, in life are I love food and wine. I love cooking. <laughs> I love drinking too. And uh, and so I feel very lucky in that I found the way to meld the two into a business and that I was one of the first people with my dear friend uh Shep Gordon, S H E P. There's a movie made there was a movie made on Netflix about Shep, and I'm the only non famous person in the movie who's still in the movie. Oh wait, but you're really it's on Netflix we, now? Um, yeah, yeah. The the movie's called They Call Me Supermensch and it's it's we basically created a the first food and wine festival that I know about in South Beach before there was a South Beach oh, cool. wine and food festival. And we basically saw that chefs were entertainers and that chefs, you know, entertained with with their plate instead of on a stage. And we had a way to profile 
and portray chefs and give them the spotlight they deserve. I mean, I'm going back to when we first started, you could take some of the most famous chefs in the world who today are rock stars, you know, treated like rock stars. And back when I'm talking, they couldn't go through the front door of a hotel lobby if they were doing a special event. They had to go through the service entrance in the back. They could not walk wow. through the front door. And mm-hmm. so how things have changed. And I remember once doing an event for a car company, and it was one of the fam- most famous chefs in the world from France because it was a French theme, Roger Verger. And I can tell you the 20 major chefs who came who worked for Verger at one point or another in France. And the entertainment oh, wow. was Kenny Loggins. <laughs> I, I, yeah. Yeah. Kenny, yeah. As many people wanted Verger's autograph that wanted Kenny's autograph. And Kenny was the first who said, uh, can I meet Chef Verger? And just so nice and people, but, but it really started something. So when I left Burson to, I just, I just continued and American Express, who I was working with asked if, if they could be a client. And I started my agency in 1990 as an experiential agency using lifestyle marketing content. So what does that mean? That's that's food, it's wine, it's arts. Not so much as much in the sports. We weren't looking to, to, to be everything to everyone. But definitely our lane was working in creating lifestyle events that brought people together and has been shown. And right now during this mm-hmm. pandemic more than ever, It's food and getting together that people are yearning for more than anything. The whole notion, older than older than me, of breaking bread together, building relationships together. That's what we see. We saw we saw as the as the backbone for what we did as an agency. Because if you think of it, sports, well, wonderful, and I love sports as much as the next guy. Those are spectator sports. You can sit at a football game or at a a, a golf tournament, and you can sit next to somebody, but Right. You're, you're you're a spectator when you're when you're eating a meal and I don't care. It can be the fanciest meal or it can be the best barbecue at the moment or the best burger. Didn't ma- doesn't matter. It's about the experience. So for 30 years, we have we have basically created experiences with just about every chef and restaurant in the world that that has made a contribution on the culinary scene. And we tell stories. So, I, this, so I, I like to say, and I, I paraphrase this from one of my friend, celebrated chefs, television host, author, uh, mm-hmm. Andrew Zimmer, who's in Minneapolis, who just had a beautiful, wonderful 10 part series on immigrants and the, and the, and the voice that immigrants played. It was on MSNBC in our country. And he says, you know, I'm a cook, but what I do is I tell stories because stories brings people together. So everything we do, is letting people tell a story that somebody else couldn't tell. So, for example, um, you might be able to go buy barbecue wherever. I'm going to take you see, it doesn't have to be ex- fancy or, or extravagant. But if I find the best pitmaster, barbecue pitmaster, who shows you now online how to barbecue or smoke, and you've had a meal kit delivered to you, so you're doing it with them every step of the way, and you're coming on and you're able to ask questions. And, and you get a whole kit and maybe a secret ingredient that nobody else has and a signed cookbook. That's the story. That's what you get to mm. take away as a memory that only you can talk about. So, and, and that's, and that's special. And I think um, when you also talk, I'll say, so this is one of my, my, my sub superpowers is I like to think I have a good grasp on what people mm-hmm. would find cool or like. So we've done thousands, we've done thousands of these experiences thousands and 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 basically you know they they they're all different but they all have in common is they have to resonate with the people they have to resonate clients like Ernst and young and others others that i can't even mention talk to their clients like having to create something special enough that they're able to invite their clients to share something with them that otherwise they would never right get to be at so for example, with a restaurant, we did something out where you can't even get a table. Rayo's restaurant, Italian restaurant in New York, 130 years old. And we arranged for only the second time in history for that restaurant to close down for Ernst & Young to invite 50 of their most senior clients to a, a dinner. The thing, and normally, you know, you think about Ernst & Young, very high end. There's certainly a lot more than accounting firm. They talk to CFOs if they're lucky chief information officers, 
that high touch experience that we were able to help Ernst & Young EY provide to their customers is something that they're still talking about. And clients more than ever need retention. They want, the, you, they want your help to help them figure out a smart, cost-effective way that they can keep in touch with their clients. It doesn't have to be expensive. Herb, your company has done so much. And it seems that at the core, that it's really been about connecting people through experiences using food, which I think is brilliant because the way you did it is you created those experiences virtually. And that is needed right now. That connection is needed. And of course, food is always a good thing in wine and drinking. Um, but now, you know, since March of this year, you know, a lot has been going on and the meetings and conventions industry in particular took a big hit. Um, and it just, people had to make some adjustments. So can you share with the audience how your company navigated through the terrain? Well, thank you, Shantae. I can, I can give examples. And I have to start by saying what we did, and we were out of the gate in April with, with creating these virtual experiences with celebrated chefs and winemakers doing wine tastings. But the key as we as the months progressed was realizing that people were, were having Zoom fatigue, as it's been called, after being on Zoom or WebEx or whatever it is for how many hours during the day, the last thing they wanted was another hour on Zoom for something, even to the point where I remember I had friends and they'd say on a Friday night, hey, let's do a Zoom call with a cocktail. After about one or two of those, they sort of faded away because the idea of another Zoom, whatever. So you have to, so we had to adapt. So I'll, instead of just being now a, an experience where you're watching somebody else cook or you're watching somebody else take, talk, uh, tasting wines, we made it possible for the, th that person at home to have a, all the ingredients so that they could cook along. And there are several organizations, companies out there. Um, that will provide that boxed up meal, depending upon what it is. In our case, being the events company we are, we work directly with the chefs to package up and box up literally everything, every ingredient that someone would need um, to make the dish, of ho dish at home. And it, we did it with celebrated mm -hmm. chefs like uh, Aron Sanchez, who was on a Zoom with his mom, Zarella Martinez. Uh, who who work, walked people how to make the absolute perfect margarita to the best guacamole. I mean, who doesn't like that? Especially, I know you're going to be hungry I, now. I that know. sounds good. And, and a little, <laughs> That's a winning combination. A kick to it. <laughs> so, and sometimes go, working directly with the restaurant. I mean, so many restaurants today are doing curbside delivery or takeout. Not many, unfortunately, are are shipping their food. They're not shipped up. They're not set up to do that. But there is a service, and there's now a few that are doing that. And Gold Belly is one that comes to mind. So if you go on the Gold Belly site, and they've been doing it now for a few years, um, pre-pandemic, you can order full meals from some of the finest and most famous restaurants across the country. And it could be, you know, the the best gumbo from Commander's Palace in, in New Orleans to, uh, I mentioned barbecue before. I guess you can tell I love barbecue. But, you know, right? if I think of, you know, <laughs> um, Johnson's Barbecue down south where you'd wait three hours to try to get in. Now it can be delivered to your door in two days. And it all comes. So these are pre-cooked? Yeah, these are pre-cooked. And for the most, they come both ways. Not everything comes both ways. Okay. Some things come. Where you literally just have to heat it up in the oven or your microwave, and you can have the exact same experience as if you're in God knows where, Alabama, Mississippi, if I'm talking barbecue, down to cakes and desserts and your favorite deli and your favorite pizza. I mean, the pizza, and 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 in the Gold Belly case, case pizza is one of their best sellers because it's something that a family can enjoy all together. And who doesn't like pizza? All right. You got my interest yeah, so, here. <laughs> I mean, we could go off on a whole other five hours of what kind of pizza you like. Do you like deep dish? Do you like, do you like thin? Do you like, you like crunchy? Do you like, 
you know, regular Neapolitan, and it goes on and on. And you can find them all right. on, 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 on Gold Belly. I'm not doing an ad for Gold Belly here, but we. Okay, wait, no, wait, wait. Is it Gold, 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 gold Belly? Gold, like gold, gold Belly, G O L D B L Y dot com? G yeah, G O L D is in dog, Belly, B E L L Y dot com. And they're okay. one of the okay. most advanced, having having gotten many famous chefs and famous restaurants to to put meals together that people could have access to and order um, from their website. And also meals that you want to cook. So they have access to some of the best steaks from the best steakhouse that you can just order up and, and have delivered to you and just put them in the oven or the broiler or however you would make a steak. But it's the kind of, you know, it's meat at another level, the restaurant level. So, you know, in our case, we would then tie in a celebrity chef or a chef who's known. So take my example of, in, in New Orleans with Commander's Palace. We would get that chef who actually is making that meal to come on the Zoom call or WebEx or whatever and talk about that dish. Talk about how long it's been on their menu over 100 years and what made it special. And then actually walk the audience through how to make it. And, and you know, we're, we're doing that every day with someone. Uh, my friend who's a neighbor, he, he, he has a company, a management company in the music business called 300 Entertainment, Kevin Lyles. Kevin, in prior life, was uh, president of Def Jam Records. He's doing an event on Friday night, a board meeting, where the 15 members of the board, and they're all scattered somewhere, they're all going get to a, get a meal delivered to them sat Friday morning beforehand from no less mm -hmm. than the Michelin star chef, Daniel Ballou. They get the box in the morning, and all they have to do is heat it up in the oven or the microwave and follow the very specific instructions from Chef Daniel Ballou. And they're all going to have dinner together. And then we've arranged as a surprise and delight for Daniel Ballou to go on that call for 10, 15 minutes and say, hey, everybody, how are you? Kevin, good to see you. Sorry, I'm not there with you, but I'm glad I could cook for you for tonight. And you're having a special meal of my short ribs braised in a red wine sauce. And your bottles of wine delivered to them through one of the handful of wine retailers that we work through, as well as with directly from wineries that we have, they have the license to ship directly to the to people, to the consumer. So they're getting as close as they could get to the real experience as being in the in the in the restaurant or whatever. And I gotta tell you, Shante, in a lot of times it's better because. I don't have to leave my house. I was thinking that you're I don't comfortable. Have to you're... Out of my... <laughs> and you're home. I don't have to change my sweatpants. I don't have to worry about drinking and driving. Right. Right. So there's a lot to this that I say in our virtual hybrid event world, the hybrid part being the the real deliveries of, of the food and, and all of that. And in this last case I gave you with Daniel Ballou, the winemaker is going to also go on that on, on the Zoom call and talk about the wines that he picked to go with that meal. Um, so, so it's creating that special experience that people will talk about and you could do that with what are the best burgers or what, you know, me being in New York, which is arguably, I maybe have some bias is one of the best food towns in the country. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. I'm sure you may disagree, <laughs> but you know, and I have friends who like New York style pizza. I may send them all pizza from from one of these sites or have, you know, ship them and then have the pizza guy come on talking about his favorite, you know, his special pizza. People, you know, New Yorkers especially. So do Chicagoans, Detroit style pizza. Most people take pizza very yeah. seriously. You know what, Herb, as I'm hearing you talk, you like with, with the delivery of the food, like the people are getting not just the food, but they're getting a story. They're getting a connection from an expert, for example, the chef who can talk to you about the dish and what was in it, if it was cheese, what types of cheeses, how long it took the age, all the details on things like that. Same thing with like the wine. Um, you know, they can have the wine and having the expert talking about the wine or the where the vineyard it came from, just all those really cool details. And that creates memories. Like I think of experiential marketing. I, I know that's where your background comes from. You mentioned that earlier, but I really do see that as you're talking about that. 
And I see how that can make your memories last for people. Mm -hmm. It's all an exploration. You're so right, Shantae. It's all an explanation. We have a, we have a tasting coming up. You know, bourbons are very hot right now. Scotch and bourbon, but bourbons. Maybe I, I'm not sure. Maybe it's a U.S. American sentiment because bourbons are are made in America versus scotches, um, and obviously Scotland or Ireland. And there are so many different bourbons, and all these bourbon freaks out there just love their bourbon. I'm one of them. My brother-in-law is worse than <laughs> I am. And there's so many different ones and different styles. So we found a way to create these little miniature bottles. They're bigger than the kind of bottles you'd get on an airline if you were in an airline and you asked for like a Bloody Mary or something like that. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's similar. And then you put a tasting. You put six of those bottles together in a kit with some notes about each one. You send it to your the customers or the group you're going to entertain. And then you have the 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 bourbon maker distiller come on that that call, the Zoom call, and explain and walk you through the, the six different bourbons and, and and how each one is made differently, no different than wine. That becomes a story. That becomes an experience. And that's a very, very, very big part of what we do and have done. The other part, which was groundbreaking for us. Marcus Samuelson, Chef Marcus Samuelson and I decided that there needed to be a, a, a spotlight shown on Harlem, which was so such an iconic neighborhood, world known with the Apollo Theater and museums and restaurants. And it was sort of like in terms of recognition, though, it was about 10 years behind Brooklyn, in my in our opinion, as a restaurant, as a as a as a borough that had move forward and had its own identity. Part of that is because I think of of of, of people like Jay-Z and others in Brooklyn who just helped to make Brooklyn what it is and the new arena there and everything. So Marcus and I said, let's bring in sponsors and let's shine a spotlight and bring people to Harlem by offering something special. And we created this this celebrity chef experiential four day food and wine festival, actually five days with events mm -hmm. and chef demonstrations. And we turned out 50, 60 different restaurants in the middle of Morningside Park. We had chef demonstrations, but what made people come, because they could go to Harlem if they wanted and go do restaurants and experience on their own. We took our famous chef friends from Bobby Play to Admiral Lagasse to, we even had the number one chef in the world, Massimo Batura from Italy, fly in just to do a dinner one night and then fly out the next morning. So we made it special, but we always kept the focus on Harlem. So a Bobby Flay who would come uptown to Harlem, and he loves Harlem, and a Harlem restaurant would be the host. They would be hosting him as the guest chef, and Bobby would be asked to do his interpretation of, 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 a, of whatever that restaurant and that chef is, how he sees it through their lens. And there were some amazing different interpretations and versions of that. And all of our events sold out. So now, and, and one of our sponsors was Citigroup, who their research showed that we had actually driven people and brought people to Harlem from seven different countries in 36 states. And that was, wow, yeah, really? and that was true, not only having big sponsors like Citigroup and, and others, we brought in media part, we brought in. We brought in like USA Today. And if I say USA Today, you probably, the only time you were out, you, you see a USA Today is when you're at an airport or you're in a hotel room. You never see it anywhere else. Right. So that's exactly the audience you wanted. We didn't want people in Harlem. To, we didn't want to just preach to our own choir. So we really marketed it by making sure our messaging was all promoted outside of Harlem. And it worked. And this year, of course, with the pandemic, we said we can't assemble in those large numbers safely. What are we going to do? And one of our media partners from the beginning has been ABC7, which is the local ABC television station. And I said, I called them up and I said, you promoted us every year. You run PSA spots promoting the festival. Be our partner and help us promote a TV show. And they said, well, we can't help you promote it, but you got a lot of contacts and skills and corporate connections. You put the show together and produce the show, and we'll find a way to air it. I went, huh? Okay. So I, wow. I reported that back to Marcus, and Marcus and I looked at each other, and he said, he says, okay, you know how to do festivals. I know how to cook. What do we know about producing a TV show? And I said, hey, 
we'll, we're going to learn and we're going to do it. And would you know, I mean, you also one of the great tenants I've learned is always know what you know and know what you don't know. and Know who to bring mm-hmm. in who can help you. So we wound up producing a one hour TV special that won its time slot. It was in July, July 17th, I want to say at 7 p.m. on a Saturday night. We not only won our time slot against every other show that was on, we attracted 10 times the number of over almost a quarter of a million people saw the show. And we had done it as a fundraiser to help charities in Harlem, like City Meals on Wheels and Harlem Park to Park, which is a small business organization that helps small businesses and restaurants get back on their feet. We raised 10 times the amount of money. So wow. we, we were like, look at us. Like we know where we're going. <laughs> and you know what? As a result of that, there'll probably be some hybrid version of this moving forward. And that's what I mean when I say this, you know, good comes from craziness and good comes from disruption. Sometimes, you know, disruptors like to be in charge of the disrupting and other times it's done for you and it just is. And that's what happened here with the pandemic. And um, I really think that we learned something here where we can just reach so many people and Marcus and I are blessed with an amazing uh, list of contacts. I used to say Rolodex, and then I see all the young people, young people who work for me say, what's a Rolodex? Oh, my God, right. I feel so old. <laughs> and, um, you know, that we got all our friends from, oh, my God, from D-Nice to I uh, just major, major celebrities to come on and, and, and be part of our show and help spread the word and perform. And it was special. And so I, I think that continues in some way. And then we'll do small exclusive dinners for small gatherings that are social, you know, safety, COVID compliant in some cities as we look to expand beyond New York mm. in, 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 you know, in 2021. And we'll look to do that. But, you know, one of the first questions you asked me, Shante, if I may, was, you know, you know if I consider myself an entrepreneur. And mm-hmm. that's a really interesting term. I, I feel like so many of your, so the, so the old school answer, I guess I am. Uh, and it's not that I didn't like having bosses or being in a rule, in a rigid system. I did. I, I, you know, I did well. And I still have all the little complimentary notes that all my bosses wrote me and telling me about the good jobs I did or whatever. But at some point I wanted to do things that were outside the norm of what the big company did. So it was time for me to explore. I guess that was the entrepreneurial side of me that realized Mm -hmm. that where I was headed was more than just figuring out about writing press releases about boring products and that I was going to find a way. (laughs) I was going to find a way to marry up my personal interest with a way to make money at it. And I say that as a qualifier around entrepreneur because so many entrepreneurs I talk to today they're they're all about what's your exit strategy? What's your exit strategy? Mm. I didn't have an exit strategy. Exit strategy. Oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna ramp up. We're gonna do this. We're gonna flip this in five years, and we're gonna blah blah blah. blah. I'm thirty years and going, and I've never let back. And my reasons were because I loved the idea of a smaller agency where I could do what I wanted in a way. Obviously, that has worked to build a multi million dollar agency. We do events all over the world. We mm-hmm. have fortune. 20 clients, which is amazing for an organization our size. And I never thought of what my end game is or my exit game. I just wanted to expand from, you know, maybe because I was so young, I wanted to do what I, what, 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 what my passion, where my passion directed me. And it goes back to that quote you said in the beginning, follow your passion. You make your own decisions mm-hmm. you do, and you make those choices. Don't let them be made for you. And that's, and that's what I did. And I consider myself so lucky in that I found a way to follow my passions because if you're not passionate about what you do, then, then you're just missing, missing your life, especially if you're at a, by the way, I all, I totally understand people who need a job and they got to do with their, whatever their skill set is. But if you're a young person and you're just starting out, follow that passion and you will get there because it's the passion that will drive you to go, to go that extra step. Well, Herb, this has been a wonderful conversation. I feel like I'm talking to an old friend. 
Oh, thank you. Sorry for the sorry for all the no, technical it's, it's difficulties. But it really has been fine. Yeah. Like I really feel like like I've talked to nobody here. You're too kind. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, Herb, tell really. tell the audience how they can contact you. I'm sure someone's gonna want to connect with you and have events with your wonderful world known chefs and and wine experts. Like, how does the audience contact you? The best way. Sure. The best way to contact me is the best way to contact me is through email. Uh, Carlitz at K-A-R-L-I-T-Z at Carlitz.com. K-A-R-L-I-T-Z at K-A-R-L-I-T-Z dot com. That's my email. I read all the emails. I even check the spam folder. Not a problem. That is the best way that to, to get to me and I will you know, my my I don't just answer every call on, the, on on my cell phone, which is crazy. And I try to put the phone down, but I literally go through every email one at a time, forward them. And I and, and I think that's the best way to reach me day to day. If anybody is in New York right now, you know, we're all working v- remotely at home, but our offices are on 41st Street and 7th Avenue in New York City. If somebody's ever there when we're post pandemic and they want to come by and say hi, I welcome them coming and, and saying hi. And I'm open to meeting somebody on a Zoom call or something like that. You know, I, I love meeting people and I meet a lot oh, of interesting well, people you. that way. Thank they you. Like Herb. yourself. Again, this has been definitely a pleasure. And I just thank you so much. Thank you so much for the invitation. And I look forward to reconnecting with you. Well, thank you. So again, I just want to thank you again for being a guest on the Brilliant Events and Venues podcast. And I just really enjoyed having you here. So everyone, remember the quote from Roy T. Bennett. Attitude is a choice. Happiness is a choice. Optimism is a choice. Kindness is a choice. Giving is a choice. Respect is a choice. Whatever choice you make, makes you choose wisely. So all of my event planners, event professionals, venue managers, enjoy your day. And I look forward to connecting with you all on the next episode of the Brilliant Events and Venues podcast. Until next time. Increase attendee engagement at your events with Scavengers Game-Based Mechanics. Learn more at scavengerhunt.biz or give us a call at 800-975-5161.